And joining us right now to talk more about it and a lot of other things is former Republican presidential candidate, Fox News contributor Herman Cain. Herman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. What do you think about this plan, this executive action, and, and what the impact is on business? How would you envision this would work, more on the private sector or government, in terms of creating these opportunities and education for these new jobs? Probably more on the private sector, and I think this is an excellent way to bring awareness to a much-needed area in terms of job training. Secondly, what this executive order would do with the uh, National Workforce Council that's going to be a part of this, it's going to bring attention to the value we already have in this country with technical schools, two-year schools. They are often not talked about a lot in the media and in articles, but they are a tremendous resource. So what I see this organization doing with this focus is helping to identify the resources we already have for training and connect them to a lot of companies who take the pledge. I think it is an excellent awareness. We want to talk to you about tr tariffs as well, though. I mean, this is certainly something yes. that is needed when you look at the job training. But the president is also threatening auto tariffs. As the Federal Reserve report released yesterday showed that manufacturers across the U.S. are concerned about these tariffs. What effect are these trade tensions going to have on economic growth, in your view? Are you as worried about manufacturers are on these tariffs? I'm not as worried as much as they are, and here's why. The whole purpose of talking about we can impose tariffs, which we can, is to get people to the table. A lot of people are nervous, and rightly so, because we don't know how these negotiations are going to work out. We do not have a trade war. We have an opportunity to get people to the table. That's what these tariffs have been doing. And so it's causing some other countries to wake up and say, you know, the president might have a point. They may not say it publicly, but he has a point. Let's renegotiate bilateral one-on-one -on -one deals with these various countries. So I understand how some people might be a little tense and nervous about it because they don't know what the outcome of the negotiations will ultimately be. But, Herman, it's Dagan McDowell. These are not tariffs in talk. These are tariffs in fact because this administration has slapped tariffs on washing machine imports, on steel and aluminum, and they are having an effect. And, and, the, and, and you look at, like, washing machines, for example, that the price of a washer and dryer has gone up 20 percent in the last three months. That's the steepest increase that we've seen in at least 12 years. So for this administration to initially come out and act like these steel and aluminum tariffs, which are disrupting business, disrupting supply chains, creating chaos for many small manufacturers, for them to come out and act like this is no big deal, don't, don't set your hair on fire, is just hogwash, quite, quite frankly. And then to talk about auto tariffs, that's going to knock out the tax benefit for a large swath of this country. If you make an American-made car $2,000 more expensive, which is exactly what the auto industry has said. Dagan, I don't disagree with your observations. However, imposing a tariff is not the end of the negotiations. They are open-ended. In other words, if an industry, like the ones you pointed out rightly, happen to say, okay, it's hurting us enough, then maybe people go back to the negotiating table. That's my point. My point isn't that it's not causing some price increases for certain sectors of the economy. It simply is going to cause some companies and certain sectors to say, maybe we need to go back to the bargaining table. I believe that ultimately that's what's going to happen. So that's going to be some short-term pain. This is a but negotiation that's be some tactic, game. which yeah. goes back to what you were saying, is that the markets aren't, aren't concerned about tariffs as well right now because they don't think that they're going to be fully implemented, this new $200 billion that just came out, that it is a negotiation tactic. Would that help alleviate some of your concern, Dagan, if you thought that this isn't... People in, the, people in the auto industry just think that this Commerce Department meeting today is just a dog and pony show. They think that the people in this administration have gotten in their head and use spur, is spuriously using the th um, that auto imports are a national security threat, using that as the excuse for tariffs on auto imports. And it's not just auto imports. It's not just expensive German cars we're talking about. It, we're talking about auto parts. And it seems to 
it, it seems to it, this idea out of the White House about these auto chips. Let me finish. Yeah. It, Let me finish. It seems to ignore the fact that the most of the cars um, sold in this country are made in this country, and that a BMW is a net exporter of cars, that they've reduced our trade deficit by a billion dollars because they make cars in South Carolina, employ 10,000 people down there, and they export 70% of them. And BMW has already gotten hit by that 40% retaliatory tariff out of China. So again, it's a complicated global scenario, and it, it's not in a tariff has has a lot of knock-on effects that people what don't about Ford what about GM what about the American car Ford manufacturers been... that are getting hit from overseas tariffs 10 percent 25 percent it's not fair he wants fair and free trade reciprocal trade I agree well, that's, we the tariff, a BMW that's the tariff people that's the tariff country, that Ford but... got hit with out of China it's in retaliation, retaliation. to what we're doing to, we're doing on China and Ford General Motors but that's every who we're trying to protect every... American business but hey Ford and GM have said this won't help us. It won't protect us. You're going to make our auto parts more expensive, and you're going to make our cars more expensive because for consumers. Because of the retaliation. The U.S. automobile uh, makers have come out and said 200,000 jobs are going to be lost if you slap tariffs on us, even though they make cars here in the well, United States. Well, the president States. tried to have no tariffs, and they all said no. He yeah. said, all right, let's drop all of our tariffs right now. They all said no. No, well, GM, the, the German automaker said, yeah, let's do that. That's what Rick Rennell said, yeah. Right. Right, so it remains to be seen. They have a they have a 10% import tariff on automobiles, but we have a 25% import tariff on light trucks. So yeah, let's get rid of all of them. Mm. I'm I'm with that. Yeah. Let's get rid of all the tariffs. I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> right. Let's take a look at this, Herman. This new Time magazine cover is out. It shows President Trump yes. and Russian President Vladimir Putin's faces blended. Uh, uh, what's I mean? What do you? Th I'm not even going to say anything. What do you think about this, Harmon? I think it's stupid. That's what <laughs> I think. Thank you. It's just plain stupid to try to suggest to the readers of Time magazine that Putin and Trump are the same. Secondly, I don't even get the, the point. Whole, I, the whole. The, the point is they're trying to say that Trump is quote unquote in bed with Putin. That is absolutely ludicrous. Look at all of the things that this administration has done to l lower the hammer on Russia that the previous, the previous administration simply didn't do. So I think this is a way of t liberal Time magazine <laughs> trying to send a message about how these two might be joined at the hip. They simply are not. They are promoting this false narrative that we... President Trump, for some reason, wants to cozy up to Vladimir Putin. Yeah. No, that is not the case. Herman, we need to call it Time Pamphlet, not Time Magazine. It's true. That's what it is. <laughs> time Pamphlet, I like that. Gasping for relevancy, yes. right? Yep. It's, yes. It's not a lot of that. It's so thin these days. <laughs> um, That's but all really, it is. I mean, the, the, but this is why the left constantly goes overboard. You know, I mean, there was yes. one thing to say that it, about, about the news conference, and now they're just, you know, hammering it home, <sighs> and they, they just make their whole argument just wrong. Just mm -hmm. wrong. Yes. Herman, it's good to see you yes. this morning. Thanks so much. Herman Thank you. Kane. Enjoy seeing you all. We'll see you soon, sir.